Where can you find 6,000 local businesses with just one click? EverythingMidmo.com Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune's TigerExtra.com basketball webcast. We are here on location at the Tiger Extra's plush studio. I'm sports editor Joe Wall Jasper alongside Missouri basketball beat writer Steve Wolantic. Steve, this is our maiden voyage of the basketball webcast. Uh, for starters, Missouri picked seventh by the lead coaches in the Big 12. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it's kind of predictable. Uh, the first thing you do when you make these preseason polls is you look at what teams have coming back and what they lost. And the fact is Missouri lost an, an awful lot. Um, with Damari Carroll, Leo Lyons, and Matt Lawrence, those guys basically were 50% of Missouri's offense last year and also contributed 40% of the rebounding. Um, they're good players. All three of them are pros right now. And in the case of Carroll, who was without a doubt Missouri's best player and all-conference guy and an honorable mention All-American, you know, he is the 27th pick in the draft. Uh, there's a reason for that. So coaches see that and they understand that Missouri's going to have a hard time replacing that. On that topic, how do they replace that? They're losing, obviously, Leo Lyons, uh, Damari Carroll, and Matt Lawrence, who obviously contributed quite a bit also. Who, who do you see stepping into those roles? Well, I think in the front court, you look at the three forwards that we saw play off the bench last year a lot, and that's Keith Ramsey, Justin Safford, and Lawrence Bowers. Uh, certainly, uh, Ramsey and Safford, I think, are going to get the first chance to, to be starters. Um, they're the older players. Um, played more minutes last year, and uh, if you go back to the Connecticut game that Missouri that ended Missouri's season in Glendale, Arizona, uh, those guys played significant minutes in the second half um, and really almost led Missouri to, to a win in that game. Um, I think in Ramsey's case, he's a, a very good defensive player, um, probably better than either guy that they had in that in those positions last year, and uh, a better shot blocker than Missouri's had probably since. Arthur Johnson. Um, Safford's a guy who can stretch a defense, um, maybe along the lines of Lions. Uh, he scored uh, 15 points against Texas A&M that people re will remember and made all four of his threes in that game. He's a pretty skilled offensive player. I think Bowers is more of in an intriguing guy because on a per minute basis he might have been the most productive player last year. And so I think he's definitely going to be a big part of the solution there. And Steve Moore? Steve Moore, uh, one of your, uh, your personal mm -hmm. favorites, is uh, a, a guy who's going to have to play a lot as well, I think, um, because playing at the pace that they play at uh, and as aggressive as they do defensively when, with foul trouble becoming an issue, they're going to need four bodies there. Mm -hmm. I think um, the good thing is Steve Moore's body is a lot better suited now to, to playing that way. He's lost weight, you uh, think? Yeah, he, he's lost about 40 pounds since uh, he came to... To Columbia, he's, he's 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 told me he's put about ten of it back on in, in muscle. His body has a lot more definition now. I think he's moving more fluidly. I'm not saying he's going to be a, a big contributor to them at the offensive end, but uh, he's a wide body, which is something they really didn't have last year. And you know that could come in handy when you play a guy like Cole Aldrich at Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday, National Early Signing Day for for basketball, the fall signing period, I guess you would call. It. Uh, kind of give, just give your thoughts on the kids that, that Missouri is signing and then uh, where that leaves them as far as this class goes, if, if there's room for anyone else. Well, the headliner is, is Phil Pressey. He's a, a, a 5'10", maybe less, uh, point guard from Dallas. Um, but, you know, you, you don't get too excited about a guy who's 5'10", but he's very athletic. Uh, ESPNU, top 100 rankings. You can find him at number 31 nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd be the best. He's going to be the best player that Mike Anderson has signed to this point. Um, most highly rated player. Exactly, most highly rated player. Um, I, I talked to Fran Fraschilla, uh, obviously the ESPN analyst, um, a week or two ago, and he just loves the kid. He just raves mm -hmm. about him. Um, said he's if he's not the best point guard in the country, he, he's, he's certainly one of them, and uh, he's comes with a reputation of being a very good passer. Uh, very athletic, um, so he's going to be this kind of the, the, the headliner of the of the group. Um, they get a kid from Rockbridge, Ricky Kreklo, who's a six five, pretty good shooter. Um, you know, he's, he's also a good passer, plays unselfishly, and uh, 
getting a local kid, I think, is probably a, a nice thing for, for Mike Anderson to do uh, in terms of developing this program in the future, starting to get some in-state talent. Um, the third guy that's committed right now is a, a kid from uh, Toronto who plays at a, a, a prep school right now in, in Charlotte named Kadeem Green. Not a lot's been said about him, or not a lot is known about him compared to the other two guys, um, but he's sort of a typical Mike Anderson recruit. He's, you know, his build to be long and athletic. I've, I've heard people compare him to, to Lawrence Bowers. Um, you know, he, he might be uh, one of those hidden gem kind of guys that Mike Anderson's really shown a knack for, for getting, uh, even in the short time he's been in Columbia. Mm -hmm. All right, and then that would leave them with what, one extra? One extra one scholarship still, and um, you know, the, they're very interested in a kid um, from Dallas named Tony, er, Tony Mitchell, who's a top 20 prospect. Um, I believe they're in pretty good shape with him right now. Um, if you read what some of the recruiting analysts are saying. Uh, Georgetown's very interested, but I think Missouri's right in the mix there, and Pressy has actually been a, a nice uh, help in, in, in trying to land him because they, they both come from the same town, Dallas, and uh, know each other, and Pressy has been pushing hard for Mitchell to, to come up here and join him uh, at some point. I, I think the best thing about this class, though, is that uh, particularly with Pressy and with Crecolo, there are two kids that Mike Anderson and his staff identified several years ago, have been pursuing all that time. They were, they were big targets, and they were able to seal the deal and bring mm -hmm. these guys in. All right. Lastly, on our basketball show, we're going to do something a little different, which is our rapid-fire segment. I have the stopwatch on you, Steve. You have 35 seconds to answer these questions. If not, you'll be receive an official reprimand for going over the time limit. First of all, who do you like as Missouri's leading scorer this year? Go. I'm going to have to go with Kim English. Uh, we saw what he did in the Marquette game. Uh, obviously, he can pour on points in a hurry. Uh, had, had 15 points in, in like five minutes in the first half of that game. and uh, So he's the guy I'm going to go with. Justin Safford. I would okay. say. Uh, who of the newcomers do you think will contribute the most? Without a doubt, it's Mike Dixon. Um, Mike Anderson's been raving about this kid since they started practicing. His teammates are impressed with his just his all-out hustle. Uh, maybe he's a, a lot like a, a young JT Tiller, but he's a, a much better shooter at this point than Tiller was uh, coming in as a freshman. I, I think he's going to have a pretty good year. Obviously, they have a lot of guards, but he's going to be in that mix in the backcourt. All right, lastly, does Missouri make it back to the tournament this year? I think so. I think this team has better talent than people probably realize. The Big 12 is very difficult, but that could actually work to their advantage. Um, I've seen projections where people think maybe as many as seven teams from the conference can get in, and Missouri, I think, could be one of, one of the top five or six teams in the league uh, if everything comes together. The system that Mike Anderson has in place is, is tough to play against, and I think that's going to continue, uh, even replacing the guys that they lost last year. All right, well done. That wraps up our first edition of the basketball webcast. This will at least, while well, football still going on, I believe will run on Thursdays, and then we might switch that up once the football season ends.